Hey you guys, this is Raphael Elledge from ShilohRelics.com in Savannah, Tennessee. I am so glad to get to be with you guys today. We're going to talk about one of the things that I've always found fascinating. I really enjoy seeing them and I love getting to buy them. And I've got a couple out of a collection that I'm proud to get to offer to you guys. Uh, they are the Confederate made version of the Civil War Naval Cutlass. <clears throat> In the year of our Lord, 1841, the United States government started making a cutlass, um, which is basically a short sword, double uh, sides to the blade. It has a massive guard. Check this guard out. This is a Union one, and they it's the U.S. Model 1841 Naval Cutlass. They used them on board ship, fierce looking weapon. Uh, and I wouldn't want to mess with one. When the Civil War broke out, they uh, were still using a lot of those. The US Navy did the Model 1860, which was a lighter blade, more like a uh, short cavalry style blade and a big basket guard. But the Confederates <clears throat> decided uh, that they were going to pattern, most of the makers pattern theirs after that early 1841 cutlass. There are some that are very similar. This one is very, very similar to the U.S. Model 1841, but it's Confederate made. And there are differences in the construction. If you notice up on top of the uh, pommel, or not up on top of the grip, you'll have the CSN for Confederate States Navy. This is one of the really well-made ones. Uh, you do see those uh, really good quality construction ones like this that has a CS uh, in. There were some made by Thomas Griswold in New Orleans that are very similar to this one. Uh, and from distance, they can look almost identical to that U.S. made sword. And then, and then you have one like this. This is one that you hear referred to as being made in uh, Selma, Alabama, you hear them being referred to as a Leech and Rigdon. They're not marked. And so we don't know 100% uh, who made them because there's a couple of little variations. So it could have been multiple makers, but they have very, very similar traits. The blades are very close. Uh, it's a simple double edged blade, one rib going down the middle, uh, <clears throat> fierce looking weapon. But the hand guards are what's cool on these. Look at the curve on that. They take a sheet of uh, uh, brass, a lot of times it has a copper, uh, a high copper content, which will give it this kind of flavor. They roll the edge of the guard. They put the little reinforcement ridge in it. They were trying to do everything they could with what they had. And that's one thing when you look at Confederate pieces, they got that flavor of necessity. And this is one of them. And if you notice up on top, where it's not a cast brass guard, it's a stamp brass, you've got what's referred to as a quillion. And this one, they'll be curved and roll back around. And a lot of times that would break. What did they do to keep them from breaking? Look at this. They put lead all in it to try to make it more durable because they realized early on, those things break if you hit them wrong. So they tried to reinforce them. Most of the time they still broke. This one is beautiful. Check that out. Ah, I like it. Uh, the handle of the swords, they're not just a smooth handle. If you notice on both of these, there and there, <laughs> you have the fish scale design. And they use that on the artillery swords as well as on the naval cutlasses like these because it gave it a ribbed pattern, made it a little easier to handle. And you can imagine if you were on the ocean and, and were depending on this to save your life, you'd want a good grip on that sword. So... It's just a neat thing. I've got uh, two of the versions on the website as of the time of this video. A lot of people say, well, by the time I got a chance to see the video, the piece was gone. Well, that's the thing about Civil War stuff. It's most almost always a unique piece that you only get one of. And so you have to wait till the next one comes up. And they're like, well, when will that happen? I said, well, in the Civil War business, there's a couple ways it could happen. Divorce, wedding, uh, death, and so you either got to outlive them or uh, just hang on till something else comes available. These two, as of the time of this video, are available. I hope you go on there and I hope you enjoy looking at them. Uh, and 
that's one thing about the website. I try to give you pictures from every angle. I want you to be able to see what you're getting and what you're looking at. And I hope it helps uh, educate you as well, because if, if you like me, when I started out, man, I couldn't afford no Confederate naval cutlass. I couldn't afford a Union naval cutlass. But I love looking at it. just was amazing to me, the different variations. So go on there. I've got these. I've got other naval pieces. I actually set up a whole naval section on the website because uh, it always fascinated me. Because you could be a Navy uh, guy going on a big ship to uh, England, or you could be a Navy guy going down the Tennessee River. They had to cover both things, and that's a lot of territory right there. So, go on there check them out. I hope you all are doing well. I had uh, something the other day happen, and I sold the house that I had for a couple of decades. And I sold it, and I got emotional. I was in the car with... Uh, my fiance and and her son and I just I lost it <laughs> and um, I was trying to make a point and I said something uh, to her son I said it's been a lot of good times a lot of bad times but I left it better than I found it and I tell you that's uh, something that I think we all should try to do because uh, sometimes things don't work out the way we plan. And sometimes it's because uh, when I moved in that house, I planned on being there when they planted me. <laughs> it didn't quite work out that way. I was very thankful to get to live there. Uh, but every day we should try to leave the world a little better than we found it. And that's my wish for you. It's uh, We're a couple days from Christmas and we got so much to be thankful for. And whether you celebrate Christmas or Kwanzaa or uh Anything else, I, I hope that uh, you have the best of everything. And I hope that we do leave it a little better than we found it. Because uh, <clears throat> I'm very thankful. <laughs> you hear me say that a lot, but I mean it every damn time. I am so thankful for what I got. I'm thankful for what I don't got. Because uh, everything's all right. And I wish you guys only the best. I hope you have a wonderful Merry Christmas. Hope you get to be with the ones that you love. If you can't be with them, pick up that phone, give them a call because uh, uh, if you'll regret it someday if you don't. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for all that I have. I hope that y'all have the best Christmas ever. I love y'all.